do not be surprised when you have what we call patterns that are just kind of, um, they're, they're deeply woven into who we are. And if you experience that for a long time, well, think of it as wiring, okay? So it's not like you're failing over and over and over and over again. It's like you were wired in a certain way where you live out an internal program and that's kind of how you're wired to do until it changes. So I don't want you feeling, and anybody out there has had a long-term pattern of something, remember that's wiring and you can change that, but until you do, that program will run its program. That's why addicts, for example, think they're going to quit, think they're going to stop by willpower. Well, not until you wire a new program, you're not. You're not just going to cut that one off. So don't feel bad that this has happened for a long time, but here it goes. I have a tendency to defer to those I really like and admire, and then after a season, start resenting that I do this. Oh, Angie, this is a little messenger that lives in your head, and you're ignoring what you want and what you think and all of the things that you want to say and do, and the messenger knocks on your door and says, we don't like it. You're ignoring us. Andrew, listen, and that's what we call resentment because how you really feel, you try to squash down because you fear it's going to get you in trouble. You go, shut up, shut up, shut up, Shh, be quiet, be quiet. But it starts to build up, right? Well, that's how it works. That's why boundaries are so important. So that's normal too. Angie, so far you're just as normal as they come right? What you're saying is, if you do something you don't like, you don't like it? Uh, okay. Where's the rocket science here? Start to resent it. So then you get a little anxious that you'll overdo this, resenting it and overdoing it, as in becoming passive aggressive in my response to the person that I put up on a pedestal. How do I do this in a healthy manner? I'm so glad you asked. You've got something going on here. If you go to my book, Changes That Heal, and that's what I would suggest you do, or um, I think we probably have a course on boundaries.me about you know getting into adulthood. What you have described is you said you put them up on a pedestal. So here's the deal. As you like somebody, you start to elevate them and you idealize them and put them up above you, which makes you put yourself below them, which makes you watch the math. This goes up, this goes down. Okay, put ages to this. When are we a little person in a big person's world? When we are children. Okay, now watch how this works. Guess what God has wired in to every single child? And parents who don't understand this <laughs> always end up with troubles. This little person in a big person's world, they are wired to grow up and want to have a say. They want to have an opinion. They want to say, I'm not going to do what you want me to do. I'm going out tonight. I'm going to drive the car. I'm going to put a ring to my nose. I'm going to do paint my hair purple. So you've got this kind of like, adolescent overthrow of the government here why to get to equal standing so that you can say to quote mom or dad or whoever you put up on the pedestal well i know you like this but i like this and i'm different than you you have this opinion i have this opinion no i don't think i want to do that but you can do that that's good for you and we are equal adults right and there's nothing to resent because you're not giving in to the parental control that you yourself created now, what this says is that there's maybe some kind of unfinished adolescent passage, which means that maybe, I don't know you, so I'm theorizing here, but this is what you see a lot of times, that um, some authority figures in your life could have been parents, could have been teachers, could have been nuns or, you know, uh, church people, or we hear this from a lot of authority figures that might have been um, feeling a little heavy handed to you or couldn't stand to be pushed back against, or maybe uh, 
you didn't develop some of the feeling of your own self-confidence. So you tend to idealize and put people up and think they're all good and better than they really are. But all that's doing is inviting you to grow. It's inviting you to go through that adolescent passage and rebel against the people that you've elected. Think about that. So remember, this is a, this whole problem starts from the idealization by putting them above you. So here's what I want you to do. Go look at that list of skills and changes that heal. What it says is that you've got to begin to go through the speaking your own opinions, disagreeing nicely when you disagree, having your own thoughts, saying no when you want to say no and what's going to happen is now you're going to have a good anxiety instead of a bad anxiety right now you're having the bad anxiety i'm scared my voice is going to come out it's going to get me in trouble why is it going to get you in trouble if you have an opinion with a friend and you're equal to that friend or any other human and you're in trouble for having an opinion that's probably not a friend that if they stay like that, it's going to be a very close friend anyway. So don't count your critics, weigh them. That's what I always say. Like if somebody can't handle a separate opinion, then they got to be frustrated, I guess, because they're going to find some people disagree with them. So if you can start to begin to voice those, and also here's another thing people you put up on a pedestal, I want you to start, if they're look, all good, all powerful, all wonderful, then it's time to bring them down off that pedestal in your head and start to ascribe to them what is true, that they're human beings with their own weaknesses and foibles and all that kind of stuff. And if they're not acting that way, then they may be narcissistic in their own right. It's one of the reasons why I think teachers, um, you know, people that, uh, especially in, 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 in spiritual scenarios, like pastors, for example, or people that teach things like leadership or self, I mean, even doing what I do, if you notice, if you notice on this program, um, at least I'd think I do as much as I can as appropriate. I don't want to use you as my support group, but I'll always talk about how, you know, I struggled with this and how to overcome this and have my daughter on here and ask her, what are the screwy things I do as a dad? You know, where are my mistakes? So you gotta, you know, just cause somebody has some competency or strength. I mean, I hope I have some things to offer here, but that doesn't make me any smarter or better than you because I'm on the air or I'm a teacher. And so you got to see people like me as big screw ups because we are, because all of us humans are in this journey together. So none of us is better than anybody else, but there are some people that want to place themselves up and appear to be better. And you need to laugh at that. When somebody's trying to look cool, that really makes them look stupid, right? Because what they got? Why are they so afraid? So if you can look at it that way, then you're going to start showing up and then you're not going to be passive aggressive. You're going to be aggressive in the good sense of the word. Aggressive just means energy, right? You're going to show up with the energy of who you are.